Thank you so much for tuning in on this day that we are calling Easter. You know, people have been tuning in from all over the world to hear God's word, and that does my heart good. I have family and friends in Florida and in Texas and in Alabama that are calling to say, Hey, Brother Salary, send me the link. I want to check out this week's sermon from Hillcrest. And so, listen, thank you all so much for tuning in all over the world make sure that you are sharing this message on Facebook make sure that you are copying the link from YouTube and sending it to whoever you want listen let's make God's Word go viral if you turn on the television or look at your social media listen people are going viral for the craziest things that people are dancing and people are doing pranks and people are making funny videos and they're getting millions of views within a day or two and they're going viral then I thought to myself why can't we make God's Word go viral the same way so as you watch this sermon today not only do I want you to like it and subscribe to the Hillcrest Church of Christ TV YouTube page but I want you to share this link let's let the world hear how awesome God's Word really is also I think you're gonna love this sermon I'm so excited about today's message you will see some very familiar faces so stay tuned to see who I'm talking about and just like we do if we were meeting physically at the building I'm gonna give you some time right now let's call it 30 seconds I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to greet your neighbor I know you're probably saying brother salary you're you're crazy how are we gonna do that we're at home or in the house we're on the couch even on the couch, I want you to lean over and I want you to hug your spouse. I want you to hug your kids, whoever you are watching this video with, I want you to hug them right now. And if you're watching it by yourself, that's fine as well. Send a text to someone and tell them that you're thinking about them. Send them the link right now and tell them to tune in for this awesome word from God. I'll give you 30 seconds to do that right now. kingdom come, create of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for Jesus, who gives us the way of life. Bless the manservant, Brother Torrance Salary, as he brings our message today. Bless the Hillcrest family, dear God. Help us to stay obedient to your word and your will. Almighty God, help us to stay focused on you during this time of the coronavirus. Well, the healing comes today, next week, or next month, we believe you will heal our world. And we will continue to praise you. Bless our family and the first responders, the doctors, the nurse, and all who dealing with the challenges that is before them. Dear God, we know that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. Please forgive us of our sins. We are walking by faith and not by sight. This is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, dear Christ. The scripture for today's message will be read from the book of John, chapters 20, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible reads, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary and Magdala went to the tomb 
and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have taken him. Again, that is John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. scripture for us. He read John chapter 20, a few verses in there, but you already know how this goes. I want to give you a little bit more because as always, I, I have to make sure you get the context of what we're going to talk about in this message. So let me read to you again, John chapter 20. Let me read to you verses 1 through 10 from the NIV translation. The Bible reads, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loves, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. 
They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Verse 10 says, then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Saints, I, I told you this last week, I like to watch a lot of murder mystery shows and, and forensic files being one of those shows. And listen, in some of those cases that aren't solved right away, the person is buried and almost forgotten about until years later. And due to some breakthrough in science, some of those bodies are exhumed to do further investigation into exactly how that person lost their life. Now, some of the investigators on these shows talk about how the body began to decompose, but of course the clothes were all still in good condition. Oh, y'all are missing it already. Don't miss this. These investigators would always talk about when they would exhume the body, the body would decompose, but the clothes that the person was wearing were always still in good condition. Well, watch this. As I watch those shows, I immediately think about another time when another grave was open. Oh, man. And it was a grave that was opened, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. In that grave, those who looked in saw the clothes that the body wore, but they don't see any body. Why? Well, because it was the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had risen from the dead and walked out of the tomb. All that remained in the tomb, the only evidence that he had ever even been there was the presence of his clothes. Oh, I don't want you to miss this one. This is a good one today. Just for a few moments, let me speak to you from the title of The Communicating Clothes of Christ. Let, let me give it to you one more time. The Communicating Clothes of Christ. In this sermon, I'm going to show you this morning how the clothes that Christ was wearing had the ability to communicate. Don't miss it. Christ was no longer there. The body was gone, but the clothes became the message, the message, excuse me, that was communicated on that Sunday morning. You know, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he left. He, he left his clothes behind so that they can preach a message to all of the people that saw the clothes on that Sunday morning. And it is a message that I want to share with you this morning. Oh, I hope you got time. Grab a pen and paper. This is going to get good. The first message, watch this, the first message that these clothes that Jesus left communicated, the first message was, it was a peaceful message. It was a peaceful message. Let, let me just show you. In, in verses 5, 6, and 7, the Bible says, He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. We also know from John that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took the body of Jesus and they began to prepare it for burial and then placed it in the tomb. And after they placed his body in the tomb, the Jewish leaders asked Pontius Pilate to seal the tomb and place a detachment of Roman soldiers at the tomb. And this was to prevent anybody from stealing the body of Jesus. Now, of course, the Bible also tells us that on that third morning, the stone that was used to keep him in was rolled back by the angel of the Lord. Oh, you got to get this. You got to understand this. That th this was done. Don't miss this. The rolling of the stone was done to allow all those who came by to see the body of Jesus to see that it was gone, but the clothes were still there. Now, we just read that when Mary found the tomb in that condition, she ran to tell the disciples and Peter and John rushed and raced to the tomb, and when they arrived there, 
All they could see when they look in are the clothes of the Lord, still laying neatly in the tomb. But Jesus wasn't there. Oh, man. This had to be a frightening but a very baffling picture to see. You mean to tell me the clothes are still there? And then next to the clothes was the linen that they used to wrap Jesus' head and his face with. What are you saying to me this morning, Brother Salary? That the tomb was a perfect picture of absolute order. It was a picture of peace. Let me show you why. Here's why I say that. If it was the disciples that removed the body of Jesus, as people suggested, the question is how and why would they remove the body without disturbing the clothes and the head wrap? Oh, don't miss it. If it was the grave robbers, as others have suggested, that moved the body of Jesus, how did they remove the body exactly, especially with the guard standing right there in front of the tomb to prevent this very thing from happening? Well, if it was the Jewish leaders that took his body, they wouldn't have just taken the time to so delicately remove the body from the clothes and the wraps. What are you saying, Brother Salary? Logically, the only explanation is that the tomb was a scene of peace and calm because Jesus had merely passed through his clothes. Oh, man. He, he folded his own napkin and he, he left it to the side and he left this scene of peace so that all those who look in the tomb and believe might also have peace in their heart that he is alive and that he is well. What am I saying to you, saints, this Sunday morning? What I'm telling you is that the clothes of Christ that communicated on that third day was a message that was peaceful. Let me, give you, let me give you the second one. Oh, this is getting good. Not only was it a peaceful message that the clothes of Christ communicated, but it was also, here's your second point, it was also a powerful message. This is the good one. Again, look at verse 5 as we talk about a powerful message. Verse 5 says, He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Now, that empty tomb of clothes preached a a powerful message early on that Sunday morning. It told a story of a, of a risen Savior, and, and the clothes that were lying there in that fashion proclaimed to the world that every single thing that Jesus Christ had claimed, everything that he had preached, everything that he had promised was in fact true. Just days before, can you imagine? The disciples watched their Lord be arrested they watched him being tried. They watched him being convicted. They watched him being crucified. And now they had tangible proof that Jesus was alive and that he was well. What a powerful picture that must have been. In fact, Jesus living gives power to his promises. Don't miss this. It validates his claim to be the only way to God. It is a powerful reminder in that it gives hope to all of those who come to him for salvation. It gives confidence to those who are lost in their sin. It tells them that they can run to Jesus and in there they can find the living Lord. Oh man, it's a, it is a powerful message because it tells us that God accepted the death of Jesus as payment for the sins that we committed. I got to give it to you again. I got to tell you again. It's such a powerful thing because what it shows us is that God, in his infinite wisdom, accepted the death of Jesus on the cross as a payment for the sins that you and I have committed but couldn't pay for ourselves. The New Testament tells us many times that Jesus was raised up from the dead by who? God the Father. And because he was the sinless son of God, death couldn't even hold him. And because he died a sinless death on the cross, God accepted his sacrifice on our behalf. And if he did that, the promise to us is that we too shall rise from the dead. Oh, this is getting good. All that because he left his clothes Behind. What are you saying, Brother Salary? What a powerful message that his clothes communicated 
on that Sunday morning. Well, saints, I already told you that the clothes that Christ wore, it communicated a very peaceful message. It communicated a very powerful message. Well, let me give you the third thing. Let, let me give you the third thing. The third message that it communicated was a very promising message. Oh, I got to give it to you again. It is a very promising message. How do I know that? Well, look at your screen. Verse number seven says, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, the cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. So John is telling us that the napkin that was used to cover his face was folded neatly and laid to the side, separate from all of the other linen, the clothes. Let, let me show you how let me show you how promising that message is, because I don't know if you really are able to grasp it. Let me just let me just show you. Let me see if I can make it real for you. There was a tradition in the in the Oriental custom of a napkin. Now I'm going to use a rag because I don't have a napkin with me, and I shared this with you before. But watch this: when a man had servants, don't miss it, and he was eating a meal with his servants watching. He would often use his napkin and ball it up to signal something to a service. Please don't miss this point. When he would ball up his napkin, it would signal to his servants that he was finished and that they can take his plate and discard the remainder of his food. Don't, don't miss this. Every time he would finish eating and then ball up the napkin, and walk away with it balled up. It was representative of you can come and take and clean up my area because I have no intentions of returning. All oh, if y'all don't get this message. The balled up paper towel, the balled up napkin represented I'm not coming back. Now watch this. However, <laughs> however, if that man was planning on coming back to finish what he started, then he would neatly fold. This is the tradition. He would neatly fold that napkin and place it to the side of whatever he was eating. And this would signal to his servants that I'm just stepping away for a moment, but I'm coming right back. In other words, by laying it neatly to the side, he was telling them that I'm stepping away. I'm going to be gone for a moment, but I'm coming back to finish what I started. And so the close of Jesus was preaching a promising message, one that said, I'll be back for, or I'll be gone for a minute, but I'll be back in just a little while. I oh, don't miss this. Now watch this. When John, when John arrived at the tomb, I'm trying to paint this scenario for you. I can't help but think that he knew exact, exactly what this, what this neatly folded napkin meant. And I can't help but think of that because we know John was raised with servants. How do I know? Well, listen, in verse 8, it says, Finally, the other disciple, talking about John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. Then look what it says. He saw and believed. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And just like John, if we believe that death couldn't hold Christ, then we can also believe in the promising message his clothes were preaching on that day, which is, I'll be back soon. So John went into the tomb and he saw, he saw the fact that Christ was no longer there, but he believed that he was coming back when he saw how neatly folded the napkin was. Oh, oh don't miss this. We don't see Jesus live. We didn't see him die. We didn't see the tomb that day. However, that folded napkin is still preaching a very promising message today. And that message is, although I have left you for a moment in time, all oh, saints, he's coming back to finish what he has started before he left. So I need you to understand three things. Number one, the clothes that Christ wore communicated a very peaceful message. They communicated a very powerful message. And they communicated a very promising message. Let me give you the fourth thing and I'll be out of your way. The fourth thing that the clothes Christ wore communicated was a personal message. I, I encourage you, saints, to read the entire chapter of John chapter 20. 
Because as this chapter unfolds, each person who is confronted with the empty tomb and the clothes, they're forced to make a personal decision. For John, his belief was instant. For Peter, the truth came a little later, but it did come. For Mary Magdalene, she, she was grieving for a while, but eventually when she saw Jesus himself, she believed. The disciples, they also were unsure of what was happening until Jesus appeared in their midst with his message of peace and assurance. And then finally, Thomas. We all know Thomas is the doubter. Thomas is the one that never believes anything, and he refused to believe anything people were saying until he saw Jesus himself later on in verse 24, 25. When he saw Jesus himself, he then began to believe. What am I saying to you this morning? This is a personal message for you today, and it affects people in different ways. When it comes to this personal message, there are really only two ways for you to respond. You can accept it or you can reject it. Now, to their credit, all of the people that I named, Peter, John, Mary, the disciples, Thomas, all of those individuals responded by accepting the message of the risen Jesus. The question that you and I are left with this morning is, <laughs> what about you? What about you today? Have you accepted the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross shed his blood to pay for your sins, and rose again from the dead three days later in a literal, physical body? Have you believed on the risen Jesus? You know, to me, perhaps, the most important verse of this chapter is found in verse 29. And in verse 29, we see that Jesus is talking to Thomas, the doubter, and in fact, he says, because you have seen me, you have believed. It says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Oh, man. It's powerful because we haven't physically seen Jesus. Well, I mean, we've seen him in our lives. We've seen him working. But we've never physically seen Jesus. And the Bible is still saying, but blessed are those who haven't seen him and still believe. Oh, let me wrap this up. Oh, man. Church, listen. The clothes of Christ that communicated that day very profoundly communicated the day that he rose with all power in his hand. And on this day that we call Easter, that we celebrate his resurrection, understand that his clothes are still preaching a peaceful, a powerful, a promising, and a personal message this morning. The question is, although you have not seen are you prepared to believe? Now, saints, whether you know it or not, this sermon is offering a personal message to you as well. In fact, it's a personal invitation for you, not only to believe, but to be saved. The Bible says that we ought to hear the word of God. After we hear the word of God, the, the Bible says we ought to believe that which we have heard after we believe we are to repent of those sins we are to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we are to be baptized in the watery grave of baptism what that means saints is we have to be submerged we have to be under the water because under the water is where you come in contact with the blood of Jesus that can wash away all of your sins after you come out of the water the Bible says you have to remain faithful unto death listen to me this morning here's your personal invitation here is your personal invitation if you are in need of prayer right now I, I want you to just I want you to just survey your life for just a quick second think about all the things you've been through this week all the things that you have on your calendar for next week the things that you're going through today, the sicknesses that are out there, your family, your friends that are out there that are going through different illnesses, those who have been affected by work that can't make money right now, that are trying to figure out what next uh, is on their plan, their to-do list, their life, their table. They're trying to figure out how do we 
cope with what's going on. If you are watching this program from wherever, from wherever you are tuning in from right now, we want to pray with you and for you today. On the screen, you'll notice that there is a number for you to call and we can pray for you today. 404-289-4573. You'll select option four. By doing that, it rings right to the elder's phone. The elders are standing by prepared to take your prayer request right now. Perhaps you'd much rather send a text message, and that's fine as well. You can text the number 678-492-0769. When you text that number, include your prayer request and your name, and our elders will respond and pray for you. And here's the part I like. Even though we are quarantined in our house, as you can see, this is week two. I'm still in my living room right now. As we are being sheltered in place and we're not allowed to leave the home unless it's essential business. And you've seen it on the news, the government, the president, everybody is saying the church is not an essential place. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you church is very essential. And if you are a candidate for baptism, although we will take every necessary precaution to make sure that we are safe and you are safe, we will baptize you today. Make the call, send the text, right? and welcome to all our Christian brothers and sisters, family and friends from wherever you may be. We have come to that portion of our worship service known as the collection, giving, laying by in store, where we give back a portion of what God has prospered us back to the Lord for the work and the responsibility of the church. This is an honor and a privilege, but it's also a command. And on behalf of the Hillcrest leadership, I want to thank our Hillcrest membership for the marvelous way in which you have given these past two weeks. You have exceeded our expectations, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We offer several secure ways that you might give. For those of you who haven't given or would like to give more, or even from our viewing audience, we have... A, and these will be on your website. We have a uh, USPS, United States Postal Service, uh, P.O. Box, Box 360422, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. You can give by mobile app. All you have to do is download Give Plus and follow those directions. You can even give by text to 678-541-7698 or last but not least, certainly not least, you can give on our Hillcrest website at hillcrestcoc.net. That's hillcrestcoc.net. So now let us turn to a word from the Lord. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and 2 and it reads, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, 
that there be no gatherings when I come. NIV says to set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. Let us together pray. Gracious Father, we come at this time thanking you for blessing us to be able to give, to have jobs to be able to give, to have a spirit of free will spirit and a cheerful spirit to be able to give. Bless all those within the sound of my voice who search their hearts and decide that they too would like to contribute to this ministry, to this great church. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Bless our children. Uh, and may we continue to set the proper example for them by seeking Christ first and giving as we prosper. These and many other blessings we ask in our darling Jesus' name. Amen. do in remembrance of Jesus. Our God is infinite wisdom, knew that his human children would forget. And for that reason, Jesus initiated the Lord's Supper. We find in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 25, Paul said, If I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He also tells us in what manner and what attitude we should take the Lord's Supper. We shouldn't take it out of habit or out of routine but in total reverence to God. 1 Corinthians 11, 28-29 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The Bible also tells us when we should take the Lord's Supper. Acts 20 and 7 said, The early disciples came together on the first day of the week to break bread. And as Lord's children, we should come together on every first day of the week to say, take of the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. Kind Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege and blessing to be able to take of the Lord's Supper. We do this in remembrance of you, Father God. We pray that we will take it with a clean hand and a pure heart. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take of the Lord's bread in remembrance of his broken body. Also the cup in remembrance of his shedded blood. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, rest to our soul will be hither and on the eternal shore. Oh, church, it's the whole. 
of the soul. Blessed kingdom of life. Yes, we're free from all care. And wherefore, let no night go oh, in the storm. We are sighing for thee. It's the beautiful home of the ransom. Besides the crystal sea, the crystal sea. Yes, a sweet rest is remaining for two children of God. Who will it will be no complaining, never a chance. Right, oh church, it's the home of the soul. Blessed King, thou my mind. Yes, we're free from all care. And wherefore, lift no eye. We are sad. King for thee, it's the beauty, home of the ransom, besides the crystal sea, the crystal sea. Hey saints, thank you so much for tuning in to another week of the Hillcrest Church of Christ virtual worship service. I love the fact that we can still meet from the comfort of our homes without having to meet at the building and they're trying to restrict certain things and I totally get it but one thing that they can't restrict is the word of God from spreading so I love the fact that we can come together on Sunday from our living room but still dig into God's word thank you for tuning in as I mentioned earlier we're having so much feedback from people that are all over the United States internationally Florida I mean just everywhere people are tuning in to find out about God's Word. What better time to do it than today? Make sure that you share this broadcast with everybody that you know. Send a text message, include that link, go to our Facebook page, share it, go to our YouTube page, like it and subscribe, and I will see you next week, same place, probably, same time. Remember, as one of our elders, Brother McBride always says, God loves you, and guess what? Hillcrest loves you too. I'll see you next week. Take care. As I close in prayer, I would like for us to be mindful of those three and a half million Americans who have lost their jobs due to this pandemic and a virus. We also need to be mindful of those first responders, the doctors and the nurses, those who treat the sick and the ill. Let us go to God now in prayer. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this opportunity to celebrate your son on this Easter Sunday. We're thankful for uh, the new beginning that is represented by his resurrection. We just ask now that you be with all of our members, those who are sick and ill, those who and perhaps lost jobs because of the environment that we're in. We know that, again, that you are still on the throne and that all we need to do is to continue to trust in you and that things will eventually end in our favor. We're just so thankful for our brother Turin who has brought a message today on Easter Sunday. We're thankful for him, the energy he represents, and uh, we just ask that you continue to be with him and his family as we struggle through this life together. Father, we are just so thankful for all of our members. We ask that you bless them, help them through this crisis, be with their families, be with their loved ones, protect them, cover them uh, during this tragic time. And now, as we close in prayer, we ask that you defeat us in all of those things that's contrary to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen.